All right. Hello, Fortinos, brothers and sisters. Welcome back to Ministry Revealed. It is August 8, 2023. And oh my goodness, can you believe it? It's just past 6.30 p.m. my time. I am getting this one done early. And the reason is my son is working, my daughter's working, and my wife is away for three, four days traveling for work, <clears throat> excuse me, across Canada. So I am free dad, free husband. I could just eat whatever I want in the fridge and in the pantry and just get to it. So that's what we're going to do. We are just going to get to it today because there is some more really exciting information. Now, <laughs> I need to preface it because I know it's not exciting when people hear it's Feast of Trumpets 2024 and 50 days before. <clears throat> but I'm going to bring and show more understanding with a really incredible connection <laughs> that our brother found. In fact, our brother Jake uh, was doing some serious digging and helped me actually find the date, the document signed date of when Jerusalem, uh, when a piece of Jerusalem was officially given to Israel. And I thought it was in the fall, like late fall of 1949. It wasn't. Excuse me. It was in the spring of 1950. So it made no difference whether it was the fall, whether it was spring. We know because of the accession and how the House of Judah counts that they don't begin their counts. So whatever happened the entire year before, it doesn't actually begin official till Feast of Trumpets the following year. Whereas we know the House of Israel was non-accession and whatever happened prior to Nisan 1, they called it one year, and then Nisan 1 starts year two. Whereas Judah said, no, that was just a session. That was just preparing. <clears throat> Excuse me. And Tishri 1 will begin the official first year. So we're going to cover some of that um, and, and show you these things. But then I'm going to show you something about the King James Bible. And one of our brothers, um, well, a brother in Christ, you've all seen him. He's got videos that have really uh, big views. People share them in the forum all the time and uh, multiple times at the same videos, actually. And um, he, he would like this one. So you're going to see, well, I say he would like it because it's a King James Count related thing that only if you were in ministry revealed and understood the 14 years, understood the Shemitah cycles count and understood where Luke was talking about the the group that he's going to choose right before where the Lord is going to choose right at the beginning of the 50 days, this worker group, and what the final 14th year is and what happens in it. You're not going to believe it. It's so exciting, guys. And our brother Jake found it. He's been doing some serious digging and found these things all in just doing these counts and then going into the Bible and seeing what these numbers meant in Hebrew and Greek, it's awesome. It's awesome. So again, I know many people aren't excited about looking forward to another year, but I'm going to tell you, and I said it before, I'm not going to take a long time here, except to say, guys, I feel a weight lifted off because you know what? I believe, now take it with all the salt that you want, but I want you to remember something. Remember this? Remember this video? It's, it was the culmination of all the things we know of that happened in the 50 days above the 14 years. We know where the 50 days is before the 14 years. And we even broke down proving that the 14 years will begin at the Feast of Trumpets. So I am extremely confident in what we have understood and what has been revealed here throughout the ministry for just about six years, <clears throat> that we have one more year to go. The revelation sign was the sign for us, that, that marker was the sign for us of the 21 years. All right? And what do we know about it? 
we know that there is a 50-day portion in that final Sabbath seven year. There's 50 days before it comes to an end. So knowing what we know now, knowing what we know from the last video, knowing what you're going to see tonight, I, I know it's not exciting. I know people have struggles in all sorts of things. But now we can just share the Lord. Now we can share the revelation. I'm not saying don't keep watching for dates and things that are coming and, or time frames that are coming into the fall feasts. But at the very least, you should be, you'll have a little bit more relief if or when they come to pass. And for me, and as I know it is for a number of people, not everybody, but as I know it is for a number of people here, it, it's the revelation. It's not the date, although it's a huge thing. I say it all the time. It's a huge part of prophecy is the when and the timing of these events. But it's not the only thing. We've been given the revelation of the end. We have been led in it by the Holy Ghost for a purpose. For a purpose. We don't fully know absolutely what that purpose is yet. But we're pretty sure for a number of us, it's because we'll be a group of workers in the time of at least seals. And in the next video, I'm either hoping we might do a live show so we can discuss all these different things and other things. But I still have a video coming out uh, with about Romans, the book of Romans, and, and what it leads to and what it tells us, and some more information about the worker group as well. So we're going to be spending a lot more time in, in the New Testament, in the Old Testament, because I know what the Lord has coming. I know the Spirit is going to lead into more incredible things like he has over the past almost six years. And I can't even imagine what they are. <laughs> if I could, I would already tell you. So with that, let's get into this. And actually, you know what? The way I want to start today, I want to give thanks to a few people, I know they never want, uh, It's not, they, they don't want the recognition because they do it for the Lord. They don't do it for Alan. They do it because they understand the revelation. They see it. And same with everybody else that prays, that supports the ministries here and abroad. It, it's not about recognition. But I want to do it because I haven't been very good at recognizing them lately. And one of them is, of course, you know, our brother, Jimmy, who does our Ministry Revealed website. It is an awesome website, and we're going to go into a little bit of it here in a little bit. He does a great job, and he's just been doing more updating here today. The other one is our brother, Uncle Jimmy. Now, it's been a long time since I've talked about our Facebook page. Uh, our brother, Uncle Jimmy, does all of the management and questions and and features and everything here over on the Ministry Revealed Facebook page. And he reminded me that, you know, where are you? You know what I mean? And so what I've done now is because I generally, except when I'm doing videos, I always have my uh, Ministry Revealed um, forum page open. And I thought, oh, my goodness, at the very least, I can just always keep my Facebook page open. And so I've started doing little comments. You know, I might do a comment or so a day. Now you can see a couple of them there over the last couple of days. And I wanted to let you know that you can find me in there. There can be uh, throughout the day. I'll, I'll make a post or respond to questions now. And uh, our, our brother, Uncle Jimmy, who is different from Jimmy, who does our website, uh, is also there as well and, and managing all this for us. Another one is, of course, our sister, Trisha. She manages our Twitter feed. Uh, she posts all of the videos there. Uh, I appreciate her. I appreciate all of them. Um, I also wanted to let you know that we have a new moderator in the forum. So for those of you who don't know what the forum is, you can go here to our website. Here's our website right here. You can go into the menu box right here. And you can go to, where is it? Form. You can click on this right here. It'll take you a few seconds to sign up. It's free of charge. There's 11, 1,200 people around the world that are in there and a part of it. And all you can do is you can click here or you can just go to ministryrevealed.com 
sharing prayers and 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 Bible studies and all sorts of things, news and events going on, watchmen and watch women from all over the world, from nations everywhere. And in that, uh, we've got a, one moderator is um, Petra, and she's not involved really too much anymore unless we send somebody or something in her direction because she has her own mission that she's on, but she's still a part of the whole group. And I've just added our brother, uh, Michael Kennedy, who's out of Australia. I added him uh, two to three days ago. He's a new moderator as well. So I want to say a special thanks to all of them and for everybody else that just does their part in diligently seeking the Lord, sharing what they find, digging, you know, just all of these things, praying and support. I appreciate it all. It does never go unnoticed, except sometimes it goes a little bit longer than I should have allowed it. So with that, I wanted to say thank you to each and every one of you and uh, let you know that you are noticed and I'm just very grateful. From there, <coughs> excuse me, I want to show you guys. So here's some more work that our, our, our brother Jimmy did on our website. This is the ministry or the mission page. So you can see it right here. If you go to the menu box, it's the one that's our mission. When you come to this mission page, uh, you can support the ministry here and abroad over in Uganda. You can go to PayPal or you can go to donate at GoFundMe. And you could also do it here on uh, the YouTube channel. And the links are also under the videos. And the reason is, of course, yes, the ministry doesn't need a lot, but we do help others that are in need in the ministry as well. And so it doesn't matter if a little bit comes in or a lot comes in. It does not last long because the more we have, the more we're able to help and support. Um, we'll, oh, I forgot about that. You can also mail something to us here in Calgary. You just address it to me. And here's some of the things that we're doing. Okay, so over in Uganda, our brother is printing the books over in Uganda. He has a printer that now goes on missions with him. And they're printing the Ministry Revealed book. Guys, it will blow your mind. In fact, here's what our brother Jimmy just posted. Listen to this real quick. Sisters, come yeah. on. This is our brother, um, Steve, who made this song, and it's a montage of pictures as he's gone out. There he is right there. And so it's a montage, and you can see who's being reached and the people being reached. They're being reached with Bibles. They're being reached with the Ministry Revealed book to help them understand the revelation of the is to come, to help them understand the Gospels. We're helping them with food and with medicine. And in, when I say we're helping, we're just helping in fund uh, Steve over in Uganda and him and his team and what they're doing over there. And so I am so grateful for everything that they're doing over there as well. And when the, as I said, when the support comes in, whether it's a little or whether it's a lot, it does not take long to go because the more we have, the more we're able to send to Uganda. And he just told me the other day, he told me in the forum, he sent me a private message. Do you realize how many books he says the ministry revealed books? So the Bibles, a lot of them, of course, the Bible has been there in Uganda for, of course, a long time, but not many churches have that many. They only have two, three Bibles per church. And so the number one thing we do is give them more Bibles. And for those that already have X, and X number of Bibles, then we give them the ministry revealed books as well. And he says, so far, since uh, he's been a part of the ministry, I think it was around November or so of last year, when donations started coming in that would help support him as well. And I would send it over there or people send it directly to him. It's uh, he they've printed in Uganda. I something I think it was like forty two hundred ministry revealed books and over four thousand and change Bibles because of the support that has come in through ministry revealed to help his mission over there. Man, I am so encouraged. I am so grateful for each and every one of you. And for those who are praying as well, because our brother Steve, he's always, always going out on missions. He is always going 
to the next village with his team. And uh, right now he says he, it seems like he's got malaria again. And so if everybody could pray that it would be stopped, that, that the malaria would not take effect, that he would be healed because he's going on another mission here in two days and uh, going there with malaria just won't work. So please pray for him. So the prayer warriors are just as important as well. And I want you all to know that he says, you know, the the revelation of the book over in Uganda, he says it is going crazy. He says they're asking for it everywhere. They're asking for the revelation. They're asking for the understanding. It's it's so exciting, guys. And I'm just so grateful to be a part of it with each and every one of you. And as I usually do, we also have the intro. So anybody who's new to the ministry, you can come to the ministryrevealed.com to the website and go to the intro. Or you can go over here on the Ministry Revealed YouTube channel where you're already at, and you can click on the playlist and go to this playlist right here, the Revealed End Times Study Note Series. I think it's cleaner if you come here on the website and you'll see why. All you need to do this is a 22-minute intro video to these next three videos right here, all right? This one is a 30-minute Bible study that will begin to give you the understanding of what we call the revelation of who the Gospels are speaking to. All these things that, that people have wondered over the years or that people debated and, and atheists said, see, it is written by men. Look at the contradictions. Well, it turns out that the contradictions are prophecy, and it is going to blow your mind when you realize that Matthew, Mark, and Luke, in the end, the first will be last, the last will be first. In the end of days, it goes Luke, Mark, and Matthew. That's why the discourses are different. That's why the, the, what was, Jesus was arrayed in, going to the cross was different in Luke, Mark, Matthew of the Synoptic Gospels. You're going to find out that Luke is pre-trib. Mark is mid-trib, and Matthew is post-trib. Mind-blowing stuff, and you'll begin to understand it in this 30-minute Bible study. Every single part of every scripture, of every study, is backed by scripture. Once you begin to understand that, you're going to realize that the revelation of the end of days is not one set of seven years, but two, and a portion called above. And this portion called above is the revelation of the 50 days that come first. We've known it for a long time. We've broken it down for years. And if you really want to dig in and find out what it's about, come to this video right here. It's absolutely incredible. And so what you're then going to realize is you're going to start to say, wait a second, how on earth did all of this get missed? How did we not notice that it was 14 years and it's all throughout scripture? The answer comes in the third video, that's a big video. This one's not a 30-minute Bible study. This is two hours and 45 minutes. <clears throat> Excuse me. And this one is all about because of Matthew. So we call it, it's all because of Matthew, because all throughout the centuries of, uh, of seminaries, of churches, of, of Bible studies, everybody's focus when it comes to the Gospels has just been, let's go to Matthew because Mark and Luke and the Synoptic Gospels simply give us a slightly different perspective. Well, it's not true. It's way beyond that. It's a revelation of the is to come. And when you realize it, you're going to understand why there's people who say Matthew's discourse when Jesus is coming and it's as the days of Noah, people try to say, see, it's Feast of Trumpets. Well, it is. Unfortunately, it's post-trib when the Lord is returning feet down on the Mount of Olives and fulfills that final year as the day of the Lord, which is the year of his vengeance. You see, and, and people will think that it's pre. Others will say that it's mid. And others go to Matthew 24 and say that it's post. Well, it turns out that those that go to Matthew 24 and say that it's post, they're absolutely correct. Unfortunately, they haven't realized that Mark is mid and Luke is pre. And when you begin to understand that, and when you see that the reason for misunderstanding it all is because everybody's foundation for centuries was from the Gospel of Matthew. I promise you, these videos that I just showed you here, 
are going to open your mind and are going to be worth every second of time that you spend studying them. This is the revelation of Jesus Christ for the years to come. Once you graduate past that, you can start digging deeper. And this is a deeper three-hour study <clears throat> into the revelation of the Gospels, the three Gospels. This is the revelation of the three discourses. This is going to show you pre, mid, and post. They're all true in the typologies here. We can do it in many more, but in the typologies, typologies of the triumphal entry, the transfiguration, and the resurrection. This is a, a, a video of the entirety overview of the tribulation from Revelation chapter 6 to Revelation chapter 14. This is an awesome one. People have known that one day the revelation of the seven churches for the end of days during tribulation would be revealed. This is it right here. Incredible stuff. This is one that's so important. Mystery of the comma and. The reason for a comma before the word and compared to when you have a comma and no word and. <laughs> it's going to freak you out, man. So many people just read right through it like it's nothing. It's going to blow you away. This is one called the open books. The open books is, is what we call chapters to years. There are books like people have known about with Psalms for decades now that the Psalms have, have, this, have these little lines within them that had prophetic insight of the future built within them through X number of Psalms. Well, we've done it with the book of Psalms, Zechariah, Hosea, John, uh, Genesis, uh, 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 acts in two ways, Psalms in two other different ways. It's it's really, you know, it's another level. It, it's really going to blow you away. But this is going much deeper. So you really need to grasp some of the other stuff before you get there. And in fact, when you, uh, is it this one? Uh, no, yeah. So yeah, you're going to need to understand the other stuff before you get there. And then when you really want the whole enchilada from Genesis to Revelation, from the beginning to the end, and you want to see what the entire picture is in an overview, this is going to blow your mind. This is a fractal. The big picture of creation to the picture of the end of days years is the same story on a grander scale to a smaller scale. The thousands of years to years. That to the Father, to us, they will be as years. To all of creation, they will be as thousands. But to the Father, they will be as days. That, uh, 21 days to 21 years to 21,000 years. And the 22nd is the new heavens and the new earth eternity. It's, it's incredible stuff, guys. So I, I hope you'll take the time to, to seek those intro videos or to come to the playlist and you could watch it from there as well. So... If you remember in the last video, this is just a little, little bit more insight on the zeros and ones. This was pretty interesting. Um, one of our brothers, Chris, was sharing some of this info, and I shared it in, uh, in a message, some of it as well, that somebody had posted in the forum. And this was really interesting. So you guys know supercomputers. So the AI right now runs on supercomputers and on you know the, the largest, most powerful supercomputers in the world. But supercomputers run on zeros and ones, okay? They all run on zeros and ones, no matter how big or how small these computers are. And that was kind of the story of what we were talking about, <coughs> excuse me, in this video. That was this revelation that, oh my goodness, we knew it. I knew it, but we, we, we couldn't see it. I couldn't see it. And what it was is we know that in the sun, moon, and stars, there is a zero year, but we are operating on a Gregorian calendar of years for which they had no year zero because they started with one. So that's what the premise of the zeros and ones were about and how it's interesting that we're living in a day and age where these computers and supercomputers and AI are running zeros and ones. You see, it's like zeros and ones are together. Is it zero? Is it one? And this was the confusion that I had. And now we understand zero and one. But And I, and I also mentioned how the father is the picture of the beginning, like zero. And the son 
is a picture that represents one. So even though there is a zero and there is a one, just like the way things run now, there is a father and there is a son. What do we know about quantum computers? Quantum computers are going to be zeros and ones at the same time. They haven't released, and it would be it would be absolute madness and mayhem if if AI was released on quantum computers. They don't have the ability to do it yet. Might they do it? Well, all I can say is I think AI is pretty interesting that here we are in the times of zeros and ones and the revelation of zero and one and the father and the son, and we have AI running on it. But they're also working and building and have quantum computers around the world that aren't quite up to this period that they need yet. And they will no longer be zeros and ones, you know, interchanging, but really quickly, they will be zero and one at the same time. To me, this sounds like Antichrist in his system, and this sounds like Satan when he shows up. Do you get it? If the father's a picture of zero and Christ is the picture of one, and you've got the Antichrist, you see, and you got the false prophet, you've got this zero and one thing going on, and then you have mid trumpets so and we've got seals that's coming and then when it comes to trumpets and when satan is cast down do you think maybe in in i guess it would be 11 and a half years from now that that um when satan is cast down do you think maybe we would have a quantum that the that the the powers that be behind everything in the earth that the quantum would be up and running and it would become a time of zero and one interchanging isn't that fascinating? Because at the very end, what happens? Zero and one become one. You see, the father and son are one, even though they're two separate. But in the end, they're going to be as one even more than they are right now. If that, if that makes sense. We know they won't get any closer. But you see, in the end, God will be one. Right? We know that from Scripture. So I wanted to share that and add that in because I just thought it was so fascinating that we operate in this system right now. And in the future, they plan on operating in that system. It's like, a, it's like they're trying to copy what the, what the father and the son have created, what the father gave authority to the son to do to make in all of this creation. And they're trying to replicate it through technology. I thought that was wild. You see, remember this in Genesis chapter one? This was what uh, our brother Chris had shared with a video clip I'm going to show you. So remember this, in the beginning, God created. Okay? In the beginning. Who is the beginning? The beginning is Jesus. The Hebrew word 7225 is the word for beginning, first fruits. This first fruits isn't the first fruits that the bride of Christ is. Okay, this is the first fruits that Jesus is of the feast of first fruits. You see, who is the feast of first fruits of the feast of first fruits? Jesus. So in the beginning means Jesus. <laughs> so in Jesus, God the Father created, which means through Christ, Christ made it all, created everything that the father gave them to go and create. Whereas the feast of weeks is this first fruits right here. Okay. This has to do with the bride and so forth. We've got videos and studies on it as well. Well, you know, what's really fascinating. What's really awesome about that. Add this now to what we were just talking about with zeros and ones, because if we go to the Hebrew alphabet, we know that it starts with Aleph. So he has a talk. He talks about all of this. Aleph is a representation of the father, right? It's a representation of the father, the son, but then you have bet, which is the second letter of the Hebrew alphabet. But listen to how the it is. listen to how the Bible starts. You would think the Bible would start with Aleph, but it doesn't. 
It starts with bet. Because the father gave authority to the son. So when we go to Genesis chapter 1 and we read, in the beginning God created, it's Jesus, then the father. Because the father has given authority to the son. And who does Jesus represent? One. And the father represents zero. So it actually begins with one as Christ. Listen to this. It is interesting that Aleph is the first letter of the Hebrew alphabet. Yet God does not begin the alphabet or begin the, the Bible with an Aleph. He begins it with a bait in Bereshit. Interesting. So, and even the shape of Bereshit, notice it's closed to heaven above, it's closed to earth below, and it's closed to infinity past, but it's open to the future in the direction that God reads. Pretty cool, huh? Anyway, so this is Bereshit, and R is Ra, Resh, Aleph. I couldn't remember how far I wanted to go, <laughs> but I think that was the point that you could see that even though Aleph is the beginning, and you would think that he probably would have started the Bible with Aleph, yet he didn't. He started it with Bet. Christ and the Father. He gave authority to one before the zero. And what was the revelation of the last video? There was no year zero because we're not living in the according, quote unquote, to the star, sun, moon, and stars. We're living according to a Gregorian calendar count. Almost like it was prophesied to be understood because Christ came first. Christ was the beginning. So I wanted to share that. I thought that was really cool. Now, let me show you something else that I was mentioning earlier to add to the last video. This was to show you guys when the United Nations signed off a portion of Jerusalem finally to Israel. I had shared in the last video that it was uh, that that based on what Netanyahu was or what uh, Ben Gurion was saying in nineteen in 1949 in December, it appeared that it was very late fall. But what that argument was actually about and what Netanyahu was declaring was he was completely against what the United Nations had decided because they were going to make, and they still had, Jerusalem under a United Nations control where everybody can go and all the, 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 the religions and so forth. Jerusalem, Israel did not have a portion of Jerusalem yet. And, and that was the point that we were making in the first 70 year count as to when it starts to when 70 years would come to an end from when Israel came into the land and got a piece of Jerusalem. We know the last one relates to when they united Jerusalem, when they captured the rest of Jerusalem. And this is why they've been building on the other side in the West Bank and so forth in Jerusalem or whatever the, the quote unquote Palestinian side. They've been building there since 1967, and that's why everybody's saying, no, we want to go back pre-67 lines. And that would mean all the building and all the people living there, they would have to go to the other side. And Israel's not going to relent and give that up, even though it seems there might be some talks and they might give up some stuff. You know, that may be something that kicks off at some portion uh, when uh, um, after they've been attacked, remember? We know what happens during the 50 days, an escape, uh, the first attack in northern Israel. And then at the end of 50 days after the Holy Ghost anointing, then Tishri 1, bang, the 14 year starts with the destruction of Jerusalem. So we know that there's going to be this, this um, modern day Cyrus that we've talked about. And there's going to be this declaration to allow them to go back and build for which we know the only thing that will get built during the first seven years of tribulation is the foundation, not the temple. We've proven that. We know it. Okay, that's you'll understand a lot more of that if you're newer in that bigger video, the fourth video of the intro. It's all because of Matthew. But this right here, 
was what I got from Jake. He went and was doing some digging, and he finds this copy from the UN, April 4th, 1950, signed off on April 19th, 1950. Stat uh, statute for the city of Jerusalem. You can see it's a big, long thing. And this was the, the final agreement or the, the final signing off as to when Jerusalem, uh, when the state of Israel received a piece of Jerusalem. And when they did, you just saw it was signed off. It, the, the meeting one was on April 4th, and it was signed off on the 19th of April, 1950. Okay. We're going to share a little bit more on that in a bit. You guys remember in the last video, why was it important? Because everywhere we read on these things, like Zechariah chapter one, for those though that don't know, when I talk about chapters to years, okay, you see these chapters to years. When you're in some of those older videos, the chapters to years form won't be updated. Okay, the year count won't be updated. It was based on what we thought up to that point, what we had understood up to that point. The, the thing is, it never changes the layout of what takes place during the end of days. It, it has never been, oh, does the revelation change? No, nothing changes. Only the year in which it was expected to begin. None of the revelation changes. None of the chapters to years change. Only the year count. So when you're watching that, the, the chapters to years video in the intros and so forth, you won't have this updated one. So if you want, you could always print this updated one. And for everybody else, as a little side note, if you go under this last video or even this video you're listening to now, you can go in the description box under the video and in fact here let me just show you in case there's some new people you just go to the description box and you'll find it right here okay you can download the ministry revealed book for free you can get it on amazon if you want paperback you can listen to it for free in audio on ministryrevealed.com here is the 14 year tribulation timeline chart let me show it to you that's this one right here it has all been updated, so it is all ready for you to download. This is the Sabbath year count. That is this one right here. It has all been updated, is ready for you to download. The chapters to years link, <clears throat> excuse me, is this one right here. It has all been downloaded, ready for you to print or ready for you to download. And Israel is the timepiece of the end. I should have changed this here. It should say Jerusalem. I've changed that over here <clears throat> where Jerusalem is the timepiece. We've added that fifth year line because without understanding that fifth year, it wouldn't make any sense. And the changes have been made here to the year count as well. All right. So you can track it all. Does it change anything? It changes absolutely nothing. Only the when that's it guys so don't let it confuse you don't let it throw you off all right so when we see this now and we can understand when israel finally had a portion of jerusalem you're going to understand how this now makes sense as we taught it in the last video now we have literal evidence now i can show you the exact date of these things, okay? What else happened in 1950? Well, check this out. The law of return, granting every Jew in the world the right to settle in Israel was passed by the Knesset on July 5th, 1950. Well, that's interesting. Why did they wait till 1950 when they came into the land in 1948? Why was it a full two years? And just about a month before they made the declaration to allow all Jews to come back into the land. I would submit it's because they never yet had a piece of Jerusalem. You have to remember something, guys. The Jews aren't 
the house of Israel. They're the house of Judah. You see? They're, they're the house of Judah who are in the land. Not the house of Israel that has been scattered throughout the entire earth. You see, we've talked on that many times. So what were they waiting for before making this declaration? They were waiting for a portion of Jerusalem. That's why the Jews were willing to divide the land, even though all the Arabs didn't want to. And that is why they continued to press. That was why in December of 1949, December 5th, that Ben-Gurion made this complaint and made this declaration that Jerusalem, a portion, Jerusalem is our capital no matter what. But they still never had an official portion of it until April 1950. All right. So I want you guys to remember things, right? You see, even though there's so many that are still looking from where we are today into these fall feasts and, and trying to, to see is there some other type of count? I want you guys to remember these things that we already know. We know that it's 50 days before the 14 years. We know that the 14 years begin at trumpets. Okay, remember this? Let me give you guys just a, a couple examples. So I'm not trying to rain on your parade and not watch for upcoming season. I'm just saying, if, if by doing that, it's like you've thrown out everything that you've come to understand. You're throwing out the entire revelation of everything that takes place in the 50 days before the 14 years begin. And obviously we can't do that. <laughs> Remember this? Yet seven days. And then after seven days was a picture of the seven years and also a picture of the seven days and then the Lord coming what? So it's a picture of the 50 days. It's a picture of the seven day wedding. And when the Lord comes, at the end of the seven-day wedding, which is after seven days, he's coming to what? Fulfill the 40 days of the Son of Man. When he fulfills the 40 days of the Son of Man in Genesis 7, we see they come to an end in Genesis chapter 8, verse 6. When those 40 days were over, the Son of Man is now gone. The raven is released, and the raven is the picture which means which means Arab, which is going to be Syria with Assad and those with them that will begin to compass about Jerusalem. And three days later, on the 50th day, because that was seven, 40, there's three days left. You have the raven that starts to compass, and then you have the dove. The dove on the 50th day is a picture of the Holy Ghost, everybody knows it. And we've shown for years that it's a picture of the 50th day and the anointing on the 50th day that comes after the seven day wedding, the 40 days of the Son of Man, and after the three days, which is not many days from now, the dove anoints the group of the disciple workers and then leaves and they go out from Jerusalem, which is only spoken about in Luke's resurrection story um in luke chapter 24 only luke is it do they go out from jerusalem well here's why i'm bringing this up again because when this picture of 50 days is over look at what comes next seven days as years seven days as years so at the very least what this is showing is that there is, as we all know, 50 days that comes before the 14 years. So the only way people can be looking at it now is saying, well, maybe it's to Yom Kippur. So maybe it doesn't begin at trumpets, but it's 50 days back from Yom Kippur. Or maybe it's 50 days back from Tishri 15 at Tabernacles. And then it's 50 days back, okay? So you still have some validity to, to consider it like that if, you don't, if you're not sure that it's really trumpets. And others are saying, well, maybe it's the possibility of tabernacles being the beginning of the 50 days. 
Well, then where would the 14 years start? In Kislev? That doesn't really jive according to scripture, right? In fact, it doesn't even jive that the 50 days would end and then tribulation of the 14 years would begin at Tishri. Nor does it jive doing it to Yom Kippur. We can prove that too, remember? Let's go to Mark 13. This was this is what we talked about in the previous video, which we, we've also done a video on, which is in two places, just to brief, briefly cover. Remember, Mark's transfiguration is six days is a picture of after six days is a picture of after six years. So when we went to Genesis chapter seven and into eight, in eight, it was yet seven days and yet seven days, which is a prophetic picture of years, of seven years and of seven years. We even have scripture that tell us days for years and years for days. So this isn't twisting or making things up. Well, when we go to Matthew's transfiguration story, so what, what does it equal after six years of seals, which is Mark's? It's a picture of the Lord coming on heavenly Mount Zion, which is precisely what we see at the end of the sixth seal when everybody's freaking out. The end of the sixth seal will be the end of the sixth year. He's coming to fulfill and, and, and seal the 140, well, destroy the enemies, right? The, the Ezekiel 39 war, destroy the enemies, seal the 144, bring about the great multitude rapture, the, the Mark mid-trib rapture. There's a, a time of silence for about half a year. And then the seven years of trumpets begin. When after six days in Matthew shows up, that's a picture of after the six years of trumpets. After the six years of trumpets, this transfiguration picture is a story of the Lord returning feet down on the Mount of Olives, like Zechariah at the beginning of chapter 14, like like uh, Revelation chapter 11 at the seventh trumpet, because at the end of the sixth trumpet is the end of the sixth year of trumpets. Not because each seal and each trumpet is a year long, but it will be six years and six years. He will be here to fulfill the seventh of seals. And then, as you know, for the first three and a half years, approximately of trumpets, and then he's cut off and then he returns feet down on the Mount of Olives at the end of six years. So, after six years of trumpets is after six days in the picture of the transfiguration. So what is this after six days of seals? What is this after six days of trumpets as years? Well, let's go to the discourse. Remember, it's already told us. Let's go to Mark's discourse. The coming of the Son of Man. But in those days after that tribulation, which is the six years of seals, they're going to see him coming on a cloud. And what does it say about that day? But of that day and that hour knoweth no man. What is the day and hour no one knows? It's in the video, right? We've got the video. Just have to adjust it by a year. <laughs> but we have the video. It's the Feast of Trumpets. Not maybe, not kind of, it's 100% the Feast of Trumpets. So after six years, as six days as years, that means it would be the 29th of Elul, and the following day, the day and hour, whether it's the first or second of Tishri, is the day and hour no one knows for the Feast of Trumpets. That would be after six days, or after six years, bang, Feast of Trumpets starts the seventh year. What happens when we go to Matthew's discourse? When we go to Matthew's discourse, funny enough, let's see what it says. At the coming of the Son of Man, immediately after the tribulation of those days. You realize Luke says none of these things. So what is the immediately after the tribulation of those days? This is the trumpets portion. After the six years of trumpets, the Son of Man is seen coming, and it's a day and hour no one knows. 
And it just so happens that Mark also has after six days, which is a picture of years. And Matthew has after six days, which is a picture of years. And both of them have the day and hour no one knows after six and after six. Because it's the Feast of Trumpets. And what do we know that when the Lord comes, feet down on the Mount of Olives at the Feast of Trumpets, when 13 years are completed, what happens? It's going to be as it was in the days of Noah. And what was the picture to the days of Noah? One year and 10 days, which is it started the 40 days and it told you that it was the the second month, 17th day. And when it's all over, it's the second month, 27th day. It's a year and 10 months. Because in that final 14th year, while the Lord is here, and it's going to be as it was in the days of Noah, and he destroys the enemies. It's the 49th year. And that final 49th year before the Jubilee is a year plus 10 days. So it ends at trumpets, and there's 10 more days, and they sound the trumpet for the proclamation of the Jubilee year. Did you see what that meant in all of this? End of six is Feast of Trumpets. End of six is Feast of Trumpets. The end of the 14th is Feast of Trumpets plus 10 days to atonement. So what do you think that means it has to start with? If the first is after six years, after six days, it would mean it must start at the Feast of Trumpets. This is why I'm so excited. This is why to be able to say, I know it sucks that it's another year. But guess what? It's another year at the Feast of Trumpets. We, we know there's 50 days that comes before it. Oh, did I just close that out? Shoot, give me a second. We know it's another year to the Feast of Trumpets. Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? What did I just do? Chapters to years. Oh, did I not bring it over yet? Come on now. There it is. You see? So you have one Feast of Trumpets 2024 to Feast of Trumpets 2025. Year one, two, three, four, five, six. So 2030. At the 29th of Elul is the end of six days as years. So what did it say? After. After six days as years, it would be the day and hour no one knows. Which means 2030 at the Feast of Trumpets, the day and hour no one knows, the Lord begins right there. He has come, feet, uh, he has come down here on heavenly Mount Zion with that mountain carved without hand. Six days is years, six days is years. One, two, three, four, five, six. 29th of Elul of 2037 and Feast of Trumpets 2037 begins the final year of trumpets, of the trumpet judgments. When it's over, it's the one year of the days of Noah, the final year. And it'll be over at the Feast of Trumpets. And 10 days later after the Feast of Trumpets, because it's the final 49th year, the final Sabbath of 7, 7, 7, 7, 7, 7, 7. 49th final year is a 10-day extra count to make the declaration at the end of it, 10 extra days to declare the Jubilee year that then begins at atonement of 2038. You see, I'm not trying to rain on your parade. I'm trying to show you that there's excitement in being able to understand and see these things. It's awesome. It really, really is exciting. Now, this is the guy I was mentioning earlier. I think he would get a kick out of what I'm about to show. He would really appreciate it. But... <laughs> <laughs> you guys all know what it's like 
trying to reveal who the Gospels are speaking to and to try and reveal that it's actually 14 years and not seven. Well, if he could either see past that or accept it for what's going to be seen, it would blow him away. Because you see, this guy talks about 777 being everywhere in the Bible, in counts, in numbers, in, in details. 777, three times seven, three and seven, seven, three. He said it's everywhere. Well, what do you think that equals? I'll show you what it equals. Seven, 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 21. And then you've got your final Jubilee. So what is it? One, two, three sets of seven. It's the revelation of the end of days. It's the revelation, as I said, for those that are new and haven't watched the fractal video, watch it after you've watched the other ones. It's a picture of the entirety of creation from in the beginning to the new heavens and the new earth in eternity. It's awesome. So he would appreciate what I'm about to show next. All right. So here's that piece. And you'll see the, the little adjustment. I just added the wording over here for you guys. So anybody who may have already downloaded um, under the last video and notice this, I've just added this piece at the end. So you might want to download this one instead. So we know they came into the land in 1948, but they didn't have a portion of Jerusalem. There was the Arab-Israel War that went from May 15th to March 10th, 1949. Agreements were settled with all of those Arab nations in the summer of 1949, and Israel received a portion of Jerusalem April 19th of 1950. We know because of a session, which is how the House of Judah counts, that means it never officially began their count from when they came into the land, meaning having had a portion of Jerusalem that's what we finally came to understand, that final piece to understand. It wasn't Israel, it was Jerusalem, because Jerusalem is the father's. That is what he's caring for. Okay, so we go Feast of Trumpets, Tishri 1, 1950 to 1951 is year one. Year two, 51 to 52. Year three, 52 to 53. Year four, 53 to 54. And the fourth year, is when the fruits and so forth are brought to the Lord. 1954 to 1955 just so happens to be the new start of a, of a Shemitah cycle. And that's the fifth year when everything is now theirs. According to Leviticus 19, everything is now theirs to eat from and to multiply and be plentiful with. We follow those 70 years. And when we follow those 70 years from when they received the portion of Jerusalem, and count from Tishri, as the Jews do, we get to 70 years coming to an end at the Feast of Trumpets, 2024. And now you'll remember, then they got the rest of Jerusalem. Then they captured the rest of Jerusalem in June of 1967. Okay? In June of 1967, but the Jews count from Tishri, right? That's where that's what's called the head of their year. So Feast of Trumpets 67 to 68, 70 years takes us to the end of 70 years, is at the end of the sixth year of trumpets. At the end of 13 years of seals and trumpets, when the Lord will then what? return feet down on the Mount of Olives to begin his day, which is the day of the Lord, which is the year of his vengeance. We covered how Jeremiah 25 said that the Lord would do that, right? That the Lord would do that when 70 years are accomplished. Then he would destroy Babylon and all those nations that came against him. He would bring the sword, and he said it would be the time of the treading as the grapes. We know that that treading of the grapes in Revelation 19 is right here. When he comes to make war, and he comes as what? With a sharp sword to smite the nations. You see? And what does he say? And he treadeth the winepress of the fierceness of Almighty God. And what is he? 
He's called King of Kings and Lord of Lords, all uppercase. This is when he comes feet down on the Mount of Olives. Remember Revelation 17? Revelation 17, isn't it interesting that Revelation 17 is dealing with the 10 kings? You see, why is it dealing with the 10 kings? And look at what it says here in verse 14. This is when he comes at the end of the sixth year of seals. It says, these shall make war with the lamb and the lamb shall overcome them for he is Lord of Lords and King of Kings, all lowercase, except for the L, one L and one K. And you see, there's your 10 horns. They shall hate the woman. You see, what is this? This, of course, as we have revealed a number of times, the one in Revelation 17 is the one from Daniel chapter 7. You see, when the fourth beast, when the Antichrist gets that 42 months to continue, you see the 10 horns. We know that they're going to have their dominion taken away, but they're still going to be alive except for all the armies that are going to be destroyed at that point. And then the Lord is given a king, is given dominion and a kingdom. This is the end of seals, the end of the sixth year of seals and there's your 10 horns you notice you don't see the 10 horns talked about in revelation 19 people confuse it and think it's the same event yet you've got lowercase and you've got uppercase you've got the 10 horns here and you don't have the 10 horns over there you got the the grapes of wrath it's the difference from here of after this sixth year is done and the seventh year. So he comes at Feast of Trumpets 2030. He's feet down on the Mount of Olives. This is the Ezekiel at the end right here. This Ezekiel 39 war. This is what happens at the end right here. He's seen coming and it's the destruction that starts of the Ezekiel 39 war when he destroys them. Then he seals the 144,000, brings in the great multitude rapture about midway through the year. There's silence for about half an hour. And then trumpets begins and the rebuilding of Jerusalem, the city, the streets, and the temple. So what is the one that we're seeing from Jeremiah 25 to Revelation 19? We're seeing this one right here. After the 13th year of tribulation or at the end of the sixth day as year, of trumpets, we're seeing when he comes feet down on the Mount of Olives to now tread the grapes and destroy all the enemies. Not the one like the 10 kings of Daniel, not the not the uh, 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 Ezekiel 39 war, but the treading of the grapes, Revelation 19, Jeremiah 25. All of it is in order, guys. It's so awesome. It really is exciting to see. Now watch this. Let me show you the really exciting stuff now. This, not that all of that wasn't exciting. And the clarity. This is why it's easy to get excited. You guys have seen me. I get so excited in videos sometimes because the understanding, the revelation to be able to understand these things is, is over the top. And to be able to piece them together, jot and tittle, piece here, piece there. And the spirit just leading it all together into one smooth story the whole way through. I know one more year isn't exciting. But drawing in closer to him and understanding him better is. And if it means one more year, so be it. I'll be here. Hopefully you'll be here. The forum will be there. We'll be strengthening. We'll be lifting each other up. We'll be supporting. We'll be, we'll be digging deeper and sharing more incredible revelation. Let me take you to something else now. I'm leading you into this final part that is just going to blow your mind. Watch this. We all have understood this, right? So if you remember this, um, I believe I even talk about it in 
the video about the 50 days that come above the 14 years. All right. We've shared on this before. Let me go to Luke chapter 12. We all know it very well. We've shared it many times here. This is a prophetic piece as well, where when the Son of Man comes to pre-trib, what we call escape. So the pre-trib is like a rapture, according to Paul in Luke, uh, uh, in uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 2. It is like a rapture. They're going to the third heaven. It's even in the apocryphas, the pre, the mid, the post. First one goes to heaven, second to paradise, third gets the city, which is Jerusalem. Pre, mid, post, a taking, a taking, and a returning. It's everywhere, guys. So we know that when the Son of Man, when he just before the pre trib vanishes, I believe 144 million people, when the vanishing takes place of the pre-trib bride of Christ, we know it's going to happen at the 50 days, right as the 50 days are about to begin. He's going to meet with his Smyrna, Luke 24 disciples. They are called his little flock. And he's going to meet with them just before the pre-trib happens. And the reason, one of, one of the reasons I believe we can understand and we know that this is going to happen is because this little flock is part of, they, they would expect to be part of the pre-trib rapture. They're watching, they're praying, they're loving, they're diligent, they're seeking, they're repentant. So you could imagine if the pre-trib happened and they weren't a part of it. There would be panic would set in, right? Absolute panic would set in. But because this group is chosen by the Lord to serve him during tribulation, he is forewarning them before it happens to be prepared. And when he returns from the wedding, as you know, He's going to then have a meal with them, a banquet meal after the wedding is going to be had with this group. And the 40 days of the Son of Man are going to take place where he's going to open unto them their understanding. They will follow with them. They might do other things during the 40 days. They will then be probably translated to somewhere in Jerusalem. The Holy Ghost will anoint them on the 50th day. They will go out from Jerusalem throughout all the nations and Jerusalem will be attacked. That is this Smyrna group, small flock. Okay, this little flock. Listen to what it says about them. Starting in Luke 21, uh, sorry, Luke 12, verse 31. Actually, let's go 29. And seek not, seek not ye that which you shall eat and that which you shall drink. Neither be ye of doubtful mind. Okay, so he's letting them know in this time when you're about to go out, don't fear about what you're going to eat. Don't fear about what you're going to drink. Don't worry about it. Because he's going to make provision for you throughout this time. For all these things do the nations of the world seek after. And your father knoweth that you have need of these things. But rather seek ye the kingdom of God. And all these things shall be added unto you. Fear not, little flock. Does that sound like it's going to be millions of people or, or hundreds of thousands of people? It's a little flock. As you guys know, I believe it relates to the two, and I believe it's 24,000 people. For it is your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Sell that you have and give alms. Provide yourselves bags which wax not old, a treasure in the heavens that faileth not. Now, remember, where, not the, where no thief approacheth, neither moth corrupteth. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Let your loins, you see, it's the same conversation. It still keeps going. 
Let your loins be girded about and your lights burning and you yourselves like men that wait for their Lord when he will return from the wedding that when he cometh and knocketh, they may open unto him immediately. Okay, this is all about this little flock. This is that Luke 24 group. This is that Smyrna group. This is the Priscilla's and Aquila types right before the 14, uh, right before the 50 days and the pre-trib happens where he takes them to go to the wedding. Okay, where he takes the pre-trib group to go to the wedding. This we now know is going to happen when? In 2024. Okay, this is Feast of Trumpets 2023 to Feast of Trumpets 2024 or, you know, Elul 29 of 2024. So the bulk of the year is 2024. Okay, so when is this all going to take place? The 50 days and the pre-trib escape is all going to take place in 2024 before the Feast of Trumpets. I want you to remember that. <laughs> You're thinking, what on earth does this have to do with this King James revelation that this guy would love? Hold your horses. <laughs> Let me show you something else. How about this? Do you remember? We've got a video. In fact, this was such an incredible revelation. Man, guys, think about the revelations we have. It is so I keep saying how mind-blowing it is. I, I don't have a word to properly describe. I wish there was just some special word that the Holy Spirit would give and people would just be like, whoa, everybody who heard it, you know, because the revelations that have proven these things out is just, it's over the top. <laughs> I know I say that one a lot too. I just don't know what to say. We know that the, the story of Moses, this, the picture, the typology of the story of Moses is a picture of the story of seals. What, what does he end up doing? He takes them, what? They, they flee into the wilderness? W what do we know happens? W when Moses fled into the wilderness, what was the temple at that time? The temple was a fleshly temple right? Covered in skin that was portable, like our bodies. Because during seals, it's still the church age, and it's going to be the temple being still the phys our physical bodies. And when does the mark of the beast come? At about two and a half years or so into seals. That's why Mark's discourse has placed where it ought not for the, mark for the abomination of desolation. Because it's the mark of the beast in seals. Whereas you guys know, in Matthew's discourse, the, the abomination of desolation standing in the holy place is because the temple will have been built and it will be the literal standing in the holy place of the new temple that's built. One is the first temple of flesh. The other one is the temple, the physical one of stone. One is seals times abomination. One is trumpet times abomination. And so Moses and them, and they're in the desert and the whole story. And what happens to Moses? Well, the picture is of Moses dying at the end, if you will, of the sixth seal, or at the end of the six years of seals, is a picture of Moses dying. Remember what happens to Moses? In in the end of the story of Moses is in Deuteronomy 34. The end of the story of Moses is Deuteronomy 34, where Moses dies. What didn't Moses get to do? Moses never got to bring him into the promised land. Who got to bring him into the promised land? Ah, somebody called Joshua, the son of Noon. What is Noon, brothers and sisters? Noon is the 14th letter of the Hebrew Bible, and it represents the number 50. It is the revelation of the end of days that is 50 days, 14 years, and the 50th Jubilee year. Right? This is where the, the entire revelation came from, which was found in Numbers chapter 13. 
in Numbers chapter 13, we see Ephraim, okay, the tribe of Ephraim, and you have Osi, who is Hosea, which is another name for Jesus, Yeshua, or Hosea, as we see in, in the New Testament, in the Gospels, Hosea is the deliverer, which is a picture of Jesus. He's the son of noon. What does noon mean? It means perpetuity. He's the father of Joshua. He's perpetuity. He is, he's continued. He's forever. And what does Moses do? Moses changes his name from Osi to the son of noon, Yeshua. We all know it's a picture of Jesus as Yeshua, Joshua. And what happens when Moses dies and he couldn't take them to the promised land? So what happens? You've got a picture of Moses like, like the seals workers, right? Like, like those during seals. And then they flee into the wilderness like Mark's discourse. And they're in the wilderness. Pretty fascinating when you understand from the Ministry Revealed book, The Seven Churches. There's the apostles at the beginning of the 50. There's Smyrna, the beginning of the 40 days within the 50. And the first two and a half years of seals. There's the wanderings of these workers. And then you've got Constantine and Pergamum as the picture of about two and a half years into seals. And where do they go? They flee to the wilderness. It's amazing stuff. It's absolutely incredible to understand. And so then what happens? Well, then Joshua, Yeshua, the son of Nun, is now the one who's going to take them over the Jordan into the promised land, starting in Joshua chapter one. What do we have happen at the end of seals? At the end of the sixth year of seals, the picture of Moses who wasn't able to take them over, which is also a picture of John the Baptist, right? Who will who will bring fathers and sons back together, mothers and daughters at the time for the great multitude rapture. And then John is beheaded. Who is beheaded during the time of seals? Right? A portion of believers, a portion of the workers, the Smyrna group, and some will survive. So you have this picture of Moses and John being the same typologies during seals and them dying at the end, sometime in the time frame of the end of the sixth seal, at the end of the sixth year of seals. And who shows up to start the seventh seal? Who's seen coming at the end of the sixth year and then is there during this, from this beginning of the seventh? Yeshua Jesus. What is Joshua Yeshua? Jesus going to do? Bring in the great multitude rapture into the promised land. And that great multitude rapture goes to paradise. And then what do you have? Joshua's portion, where Joshua is a picture of Yeshua Jesus. And if we go to the final year of trumpets, what do we know happens in the final year of trumpets. How many times have we showed what happens in the 14th year? Remember, uh, um, 20 years he worked, for, seven for Leah, got, right? Expected Rachel got Leah. That's the pre-trib bride. He gets Rachel, but has to work seven more years. That's to the end of seals. Then he worked six more years for the cattle to the end of 20. What's the end of those 20 years? Same as the end of the big picture, 20 here or the end of 13 with seals and trumpets to the end of the sixth year of trumpets. What happened with Joseph? He was 86 when he had uh, um, uh, uh, Ishmael, which is like Ishmael, which is the Arab right from the beginning. And then Mo, uh, uh, Abraham turns 99 at the end of 13 years. Ishmael is 13 years old. And what happens? The father makes a covenant with him and his household. What happened with Jacob after the 20 years? He made a covenant. Whoops. He made a covenant with his father-in-law. So what do we know happens when the Lord comes in the 14th year? He's going to renew the covenant that he had made. 
right? Like Daniel 9, 27 says, he's, he's the one renewing the covenant that he made at the beginning of trumpets that he had to break when Satan came. He's now going to renew it in the final year. What is he or who is he a picture of? He's a picture of Joshua. Jesus, the son of the father who is noon. Well, what do you think happens if we go to Joshua chapter 24? The end of Joshua is the picture of the end of trumpets. <laughs> Look at the title. <laughs> I love it. That is so incredibly awesome. Look at where we see it. Watch this. Watch this. Joshua 24, verse 25 and 26. So Joshua made a covenant with the people that day and set them a statute and an ordinance in Shechem. And Joshua wrote these words in the book of the law of God and took a great stone and set it up there under an oak that was by the sanctuary of the Lord. When, did, when does he make a, a, a covenant? When does he renew this covenant? At the end of Joshua? At the, at the end of the book of Joshua? Which is what? A picture of the final 14th year of Joshua Yeshua. We've touched on that in the past, but it's been a while. So we just saw Luke in chapter 12, which is something we have taught on for a while, be a picture now of the year 2024 before the Feast of Trumpets in that above 50 days when he's going to meet with them first. And we know it's going to be in the year 2024. And I just showed you in a reminder of Moses being a picture of seals to Joshua Yeshua being a picture of trumpets, yet coming and taking them over into the promised land first. And, and who did, who did um, uh, uh, Joshua and them, who did they have to defeat? Giants. What happens when the pit is open? Hello. You think maybe giants will be back in the land again, some sort of craziness? When the pit is open, when Satan's cast down, when, when the Antichrist is brought back, there'll be giants in the land again. That's why when Satan has his two and a half year reign with the Antichrist and false prophet again, what ends up happening? The final 14th year is what? As it was in the days of Noah. You follow? Because this, this, gay LGBT elemental P thing is, is a precursor for certain. But it is not the actual days of Noah that the prophetic scriptures are talking about. The actual days of Noah that will begin at about mid-trumpets <clears throat> that will have about a two and a half year period of time is Matthew's abomination of desolation time. That's why Matthew's abomination of desolation tells us, even though Marx says it would be a time worse than it's ever been to that time, do you know what Matthew says? That it would be, uh, uh, then shall be great tribulation such as was not since the beginning of the world unto this time. Now listen to this. No, nor ever shall be. Do you know why? Because when Satan's cast down, the pit is open. It's going to be the time as it was in the days of Noah. And when the Lord returns after the 13th year, in that 14th year, and it's the grapes of wrath, which means this is the end of 70 years, just like we've shown right here. The end of 70 years to Jerusalem. Sorry, give me a sec. The end of 70 years to Jerusalem. Just like Jeremiah, then the day of the Lord, which is the year of his vengeance, is that final year and the grapes of wrath. Okay. <clears throat> what, what is this saying? Let me go back here. It's saying that from the last two and a half years, it's going to be literal craziness as it was in the days of Noah. Remember what it says 
60, chapter 11, or the 11th year of tribulation, you go to Zechariah, chapter 11, and what do we get? Messiah, is, uh, uh, the, the Lord's going to cut off. He's going to break his covenant in that day. See, because he made it at the beginning of trumpets, he cuts it off because Satan has, has been cast down and the pit is open. Satan's going to have two and a half years. And then when the Lord returns, he's going to renew the covenant in that final year, just like the story of Jacob. I mean, of Joshua <laughs> and Jacob and Abraham. You following? This is the final year why he's saying it's going to be as it was in the days of Noah. They will have started mid trumpets. And when he comes, it'll be as that final year. What were they doing in Zechariah chapter 11 when Messiah in that end of days picture of Zechariah 11, when he breaks the covenant, what does he say? They're going to be eating each other. They're going to be eating the arms of the other. What were they doing in the days of Noah? What were the giants doing? When all the food and stuff was running out and things were scarce, what were they doing? You got it. They were eating people. So when the Lord comes and returns feet down, there's your as it was in the days of Noah, that final year days of Noah from Matthew chapter 24. Pretty clear to see, isn't it? It's not difficult to follow, guys, especially for those that have been around for a little while. But why do I share this? What on earth does any of this have to do with the KJV? With what Jake shared. Watch this. How long did it take to write the KJV, guys? It took seven years to write the KJV. Want me to show you something? Watch this. Seven years to write, where do I want that? The KJV. Let's go back in our year count. See, let's go count these Sabbath years. The Shemitah year cycles, the seven year cycles, which is what our brother did, went back and counted them all, went back all the way back, kept counting them back, counting them back. And look at what happened in the Sabbath year of the 230th Sabbath. Going back, watch this. It took seven years. To write the KJV, brothers and sisters. It started in 04 and it ended in 1604 and ended in 1611. It took seven years to write the King James Bible. Do you think knowing what we know about the importance of the KJV, this really helped me to understand. Now, I've been one of those that has said, KJV, it's not KJV or nothing. You know, if people don't have anything else, you know, at least they've got scriptures. But I could not have done all of the revelation that we have done. Yes, it's the, it is absolutely through the leading of the Holy Ghost. It could not have been done, believe me, without the Holy Ghost. I understand that. But I also know I could not have done most of these without the KJV. Because in all of the other translations, there are translations and translations of translations, and there are other men's insights. Do you realize there's a reason the KJV is the number one selling Bible in all of history? It is the number one selling book every single year, the KJV, in all of human history, year after year after year. Do you think there's a reason for it? We've proven. It's never been a mystery for us. We know it's KJV that is key. It is the most important Bible translation that's out there. Do you think there's a reason it took seven years to write it? Do you think it's by chance that it took seven years and the seven years would line up in a perfect Shemitah cycle? 
to me, this is another thing that points to we have understood. We have now understood. We are at the end of all understanding in the Shemitah cycles of years. And Jerusalem, in both counts, were the key. With year one as Christ, not year zero, even though one and zero or zeros and ones with the father and son being one are the same. You see, yes, there is a year zero. However, you can't actually see it. The Gregorian doesn't have it, but the heavens declare it. Isn't that incredible? It takes us all the way back to the beginning. This is the Shemitah cycle. The biggest thing to understand was Zechariah. Uh, sorry, was Jeremiah chapter 25. That, that this final year would take place after 70 years was accomplished. That was the key to it all. But it gets better. Because there was a reason why I was leading you in <clears throat> to Luke chapter 12. Knowing now that this equals the year 2024 as the final year from Feast of Trumpets 2023 into 2024. The bulk of the year is 2024 when the 50 days will happen. So the 50 days and when the Lord first meets with that disciple's little flock is going to take place in 2024. Okay? We know that when the Lord returns, feet down on the Mount of Olives, and renews that covenant and destroys all the enemies, binds Satan for a thousand years, that it's the day of the Lord, <clears throat> excuse me, and the year, <clears throat> excuse me, the day of the Lord, which is the year of his vengeance. We know in that time, it's Zechariah chapter 14. He's feet down on the Mount of Olives. We know it's Jeremiah 25, the destruction he brings. We know it's the end of Joshua, Yeshua, as the final chapter when he renews the covenant, which would be Feast of Trumpets 2037 to Feast of Trumpets 2038, which would be, we know he's doing it, I think in Daniel uh, chapter 9, verse 27, it's about the midst of that final year because he's going to destroy the enemies. So in 2038, which is the bulk of the year, in 2038, he's going to renew the covenant just as we see Joshua Yeshua doing at the end of Joshua, which I've just shown you is a picture to the end of trumpets. Why did I build you into that? Why was I pointing you to all of that? Well, let me show you something. The Bible was completed in 1611. So at the Feast of Trumpets of 1611, okay? So starting from 1611, if you add, or if you count from 1611, how many years it equals, see, this is why I was saying, he's going to enjoy this. This brother, that other brother would enjoy this with the King James Bible. This is the part he's going to like the most. If you count how many years from 1611 to 2024, it equals 413. 413, let's go to the Greek, 413, and let's see how many times it happens in the Greek. Now, why in the Greek? Well, because it's the Gentile bride. It's the Gentiles. It's the preacher of Gentile. 
Okay, let's see what it says. No left out or not left out. That faileth not. Look at that. We might be able to get some insight because it's only used one time. So remember, it equals 413 is the year 2024 from 1611. Do you know where this one time is used? Check this out. This is why I was sharing this with you earlier. When he's talking to the little flock and letting them know to, to, to be ready and to be girded about and don't worry about those things that the world is going to worry about, what does he tell them? Luke 12, verse 33, sell that you have and give alms, provide bags which wax not old, a treasure in the heavens that faileth not. That faileth not. Oh, I don't like that color for that. The word is used one time in all of the Greek, in all of the New Testament. And it equals the little flock, Luke 24, disciple Smyrna workers who he meets with in 2024, right before he takes the pre-trib group. And the 50 days begins. That's pretty cool, right? I thought that was pretty awesome. Exactly 413 days, uh, 413 years from the 1611 Bible. Well, how many years is it to 2038 when the Lord is going to renew his covenant? It's 420 seven years so what if we go to 427 this time in the hebrew because the end of trumpets that's the hebrew time so let's go to 427 and see what our brother jake has found in 427 it's the word oak and guess what it only shows up one time do you think it's possible we can find a connection of course, I know it's rhetorical, right? What does the 14th final year equal when the Lord has returned and renews his covenant in that final year of 2038, which is 427 years from the King James Bible? What does it equal? Joshua chapter 24, the picture of the final 14th year when Joshua, Yeshua, Jesus renews his covenant and check it out. Starting in verse 25. So Joshua made a covenant with the people, uh, with the people that day and set them a statute and an ordinance in Shechem. And Joshua wrote these words in the book of the law of God and took a great stone and set it under, ta-da, the oak that was by the sanctuary. There it is, brothers and sisters. What are the chances? What are the chances that the 1611 King James Bible that took seven years to build, uh, to write, landed in a perfect seven-year Shemitah cycle, and from its completion, equals 400, what was it, 413 years to 2024, which gives us one Greek word, which equals the year 2024 that we have now understood is the beginning of the 50 days and the 14 years then starting when the Lord will meet with his little flock before the rapture group is taken out. And 400 and 27 years later from the King James Bible is 2038 and is the one word that's found that equals the final year when Yeshua Jesus renews the covenant and he lays it by an oak tree next to the temple in the year 2038. 
Isn't that awesome? I told you guys that was going to be a fun one. I thought that was so exciting. I'm grateful. Thank you very much. You see, this is the kind of seeking and searching and diligence that takes place among so many brothers and sisters here all throughout, all across the earth that are a part of Ministry Reveal. When you watch the videos in full, I'm going to try to reduce the videos to no longer than two and a half hours. Live shows, of course, they can go longer, but I don't want to go too, too long. I don't want to go too far into getting into the, the weeds of the details. New people, I will touch on things along the way throughout to help give you some insight into the understanding of it. But you're going to have to go and start with the intro series and make your way through that, those videos and then to the deeper ones. And as you do, you will come to understand these things more and more and more. But to eliminate going three hours, three hours and change, I'm going to avoid trying to go too deep into the weeds, yet still go deep enough that new people will still be able to track and follow if they're diligent, if they're seeking in the prophetic, if they're, if they're tracking these things and go and take the time to understand the revelations of who the gospels are speaking to and that it's actually 14 years of seals and trumpets with the first seven of the 21 being the, the, the preparing of the Gentile bride. How awesome is that, guys? How awesome is that? Right there, a full Shemitah cycle to 413 years later in 2024 and 427 years later to 2038. And each of those words in the Greek and in the Hebrew are only found once. And they are found in scriptures that we have taught on for a long time that show it's the beginning of the 50 days and the 14th year of tribulation. Do you understand how impossible that is? Do you understand that it's these types of incredible revelations like this that prove on top of all the hundreds of other things that have been proven here that were mysteries for centuries, that this could only have been done by the guidance of the Father Creator, uh, by the Father and His Son who created it all, and the guiding of the Holy Ghost who led them all in writing it, who led the writers of the King James Bible and their details of chapters and verses throughout the centuries and, and all of it. It was all Holy Spirit led. And this is something that so many people in my earlier years of this have had an issue with. Chapters to years, that would mean that the Holy Spirit led the people who separated the chapters and who separated the verses to help us better understand. Yeah, exactly. We can prove it. And with this here today, you can see the evidence of it even more. The fingerprints of God everywhere. How beautiful is that? Man, and look at this. Record time for a long time, guys. This is a record time. <laughs> so please remember, don't forget, knowing that we have a year left, whether, whether it's accepted yet or not by everybody, knowing the time that we have left, please, if you're able to support, support. We are going to continue to go gangbusters in supporting Steve over in Uganda, continue to get the Bibles out, continue to preach the word, continue to get the Ministry Revealed books printed. I will most likely do an update now in it 
in relation to the to the charts and the 70 years I had held out since I wrote it. And the reason I held out is I just wasn't yet committed. I was just like, forget it. So, it was, so what? It's a little bit off. The revelation is there outside of the year counts of 70. Well, now I'm going to update it. I think for me, that says a lot within me as well, because I've never updated in all of the 70 years from when I wrote it just over three years ago. So I will update that. They can they can add that to the printing over there. We will continue to do everything we can. We will continue to run this race, diligently seeking, searching, watching, praying with you guys, uplifting, strengthening, and doing everything we can until that day comes, no matter what. And I hope and pray you will all continue to do it with us and that many, many more will come and join us in this as well. I love you all. God bless you all. God bless your families. We'll talk to you soon. Bye for now.